I'm going to shoot you using the Surgery Real Small Intestine Simulator. Small Intestinal Simulator comes with uh, a couple of different lengths uh, of intestine. Actually, they're the same length, but a couple of lengths of intestine uh, that we can use. It, it has the internal mucosal layer, so you get an, a feel for what that's like and it can work very well. So what I typically do with these is actually cut those in half and then I have a two pieces of intestine and then I can use also the surgery reel tensioning base. So I've got the surgery reel tensioning base. I can open this up by, by again holding with my left hand, open pushing the intestine in there, pulling that to the side opening now setting it on the side opening with my left hand with the right hand pushing it in place and now i've got the intestine that is stabilized so that i can do an anastomosis so the tensioning base works very well you can do these without that but it just seems to be a lot nicer to hold it together now the best way to do an intestinal anastomosis is to actually do two lines of suture material one from the mesenteric surface to the anti-mesenteric surface and then another the other direction. In this case, we're going to go ahead and start on what we're going to consider the mesenteric surface. So we're going to call this the mesenteric surface. I'm going to place the suture using some 3-0 uh, monofilament non-absorbable. Again, typically you'd use an absorbable suture for this. But I'm going to take the first suture bite on what I'm going to consider as the mesenteric surface and you can come in and just miss the mucosa with that so you're not doing a complete thickness suture line. I'm coming from the outside to the inside. I'm going to pull down through that and then I'm going to line this up on the other side. Again, I'm just missing the mucosa but I'm going to get the submucosa which is going to be the holding layer. So from the lumen to the outside And in this case, I can come down and I can tighten this up so I can position these so that these loops are facing each other. Pull that suture through and then I can tie this one. Again, just manipulate so they're facing each other. I can tie and a fourth row square knot. And leave the needle on that one. Again, reposition the bowel. I want to cut, I can either cut this end or I can actually use a hemostat for a stay suture. So we can either leave this alone or what works really well is to take this short end and attach it to a hemostat and push it to the side so that will help to stabilize. So again, that is considered the mesenteric surface. And now I'm going to start another suture line on the anti-mesenteric surface. Again, I want to find the opposite side of the bowel. I'm going to go from the outside here and not through the mucosa. And similarly on the opposite side through the mucosa. So if I can hold them together and get that, that works well. If not, I can go from one side and then come back through the other. This will always give you more accurate suture bites than trying to get through both sides at one time. So I recommend at least as you're starting and learning to do that, I'm going to bring this together. Square knot, so the needle holder is going to go in the middle of the loop. Pull that together. Because it's monofilament, it loosens up a little bit but I can snug that down on the next row. There. And again, I can use a hemostat to support this So in essence, what I've done is I have a suture here that's on what I'm considering my anti-mesenteric surface and a suture here, which is on the mesenteric surface. And I want to close this with the most superficial part up so I can 
either come back to my first line that this was the first one that I that I made here on the antimesenteric surface and I can flatten this out now and close this side of the intestine and that's going to work the easiest in this case so I take my first needle use it with the needle holders and now I'm going to work on closing this. It's very important not to close across the side of the intestine otherwise you suture one side to the other and then it's closed. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm actually use my thumb forceps here to come into the lumen of the intestine so that I can make sure and not go all the way across. I'm going to go through from outside to in, tighten that down. Again, I can use my thumb forceps to stabilize the bowel, so I'm not actually grasping the bowel with my thumb forceps. And place that suture. And then I'm just going to go ahead and suture that all the way up to this knot. So we close this side, all but the last little bit. And again, I can stabilize the intestine with my thumb force if I don't have to grasp it, go through both sides. And now I can tie this side here over to the short end of the loop of suture that starts on the other side. So therefore, I'm minimizing the size of my knots. Make a square knot, I'm gonna go in between, right here. Tighten, come along this side, snug down, fourth rows should be plenty secure with our modern suture materials. Because this is going to be left in the abdomen, I want to make these fairly short, so a couple of millimeters long. Now I can remove that piece of suture, and that means I've got half of my intestine sutured here and I have the other half to do. You can appreciate that I've been careful not to go all the way across, so I didn't include this side when I was closing this side. Now to close this second side, I can just take my hemostats through, because I'm trying to suture towards myself, because that's the most efficient way to do it, and I can push the bowel here and go ahead and close from the antimesenteric surface back to the mesenteric surface on this side. So again, as I start, I'm going to use my thumb forceps to stabilize the bowel to make sure that I'm not getting both sides of the bowel. And I can work to get both of these layers. You could, in some cases, if I'd have left this other side long, I could have put a hemostat there to help stabilize it. So in this case, I can grab here. And that will help to hold that in position for me a little bit better. You can see how that will hold it in the, in the tensioning device a little bit better. I'm going to have to work on that. This is where in surgery having an assistant makes life very simple. Because you can hold things together. But now you can see I've got this held. And as long as I don't wrap it around my hemostat, it gives me a nice stabilizing base to work with. Again, I'm going to stick the needle thumb forceps inside to stabilize the bowel. Now that I've started down here, I can usually get both sides at once. Making sure that I don't have a locking suture come through and tighten this down. So I'll just go ahead and finish the rest of this side.
And as we get close to finishing up this, uh, we can look at it and make sure that we're going to use our thumb forceps again to stabilize because we don't want to get the opposite side of the bowel. So we put the thumb forceps in here, stabilize, hold that open, look at the other side and do that. And then we're going to take one more bite and that should close this just fine. Tensioning that down. And again, we've got this last one. I get the thumb forceps just in the middle, making sure that I'm not going all the way across to the opposite side of the intestine. I'm going to pull that through here. And now, you can see I've got my closure complete. I can finish up by taking off the hemostats on this day suture, making a square knot, We're going to cut these short so that we're leaving them only a couple millimeters long. And you can see that we've now got a complete anastomosis of the small intestine.